It wasn't too long ago that my wife and I had just put our children to bed and decided to watch a movie. So we sat down and started scrolling through the categories on our internet movie service. While scanning through, I saw one that caught my attention in the documentary section. It was made in 2012 and its title said, Titanic, The Shocking Truth. <laughs> I have to confess, I laughed out loud and said, are you kidding me? I just couldn't believe that anyone in their right mind could really believe the Titanic didn't sink. So of course, <laughs> I had to watch it. For the next 54 minutes, I watched in utter amazement as the documentary, piece by piece, made its argument. They weren't saying that a ship didn't sink. They were simply saying it wasn't the original Titanic. By the end of the movie, I sat there simply astonished. There was a lot of information that simply couldn't be overlooked. But the last piece of evidence was without doubt the nail in the coffin, as far as I was concerned anyway. It's the smoking gun right in front of everybody, since the Titanic has been found, that is. Now, whether you want to believe it was a Titanic that sank or simply some other ship <laughs> is truly irrelevant to me. But the point that I want to bring out is it's hard to overcome the shock of being told something when you've heard the exact opposite all your life. But just because it's a shock to you doesn't mean it's not the truth. Yet, because of the shock, we tend to view the information in disbelief, not really even wanting to give it a fair chance as even being plausible, especially if it's concerning a topic that we hold dear, like that of our faith. No one wants to believe that something in their faith is wrong. And actually, it's kind of comical. Everyone is quick to say that they're not perfect and that they're sure that something in their faith is wrong. Yet, when presenting information that would show something in their faith being wrong, many are quick to reject it and defend their view regardless of the logic or lack thereof that they present in their defense. No one wants to be wrong, but are we called to defend our views or seek truth? Yeshua quoted Deuteronomy in Matthew 4.4. 4. Yeshua answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. So, is it every word or just the New Testament? This one verse should challenge every single Christian who wants to hold that the Torah was done away with. Yet, so many still want to believe that the law was done away with at the cross and preach it firmly, yet so often don't even see their own flawed reasoning in it all. For example, they say the law was done away with at the cross, but that all foods were declared clean by Yeshua before the cross. Though pork is never declared as food in the scriptures before this statement, the bigger question is this, were all foods made clean before the cross or at the time of the cross? Most all, through various reasoning, will somehow explain it was obviously before the cross, since Yeshua declared it before. In so doing, they make Yeshua a sinner by way of Deuteronomy 4.2. Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of Yahweh your God that I give you. And also in chapter 12, see that you do all I command you. Do not add to it or take away from it. This line of reasoning also makes him a false prophet by way of Deuteronomy 13. On top of these, this reasoning also means he would be completely contradicting his own words in Matthew 4.4, 4, which again said, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. It is very clear in Leviticus 11 as to what the word of God is declares as food, and pork is not on that list. But to say the Yeshua says that it's now considered food truly has him contradicting the very words that came from the mouth of God in Leviticus 11. 
in turn, making those words in Leviticus 11 null and void. In turn, making the very verse of Deuteronomy he quoted in Matthew 4, 4 null and void as well. Thus, declaring that we can no longer say every word that comes from the mouth of God, but rather selected words from the mouth of God. Is this the logic you want to follow? That the very scripture Yeshua himself quoted no longer applies? If so, then you also have to ignore 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. All means all. There's no way around it. As mentioned earlier, it's really irrelevant if you want to believe a different ship went down in place of the Titanic. The mystery of a swapped ship may not be a topic of concern for you. However, it is very relevant if you believe in a Yeshua who did away with the law or in one who lived it out to show us how to do the same. We ask that you begin searching out the facts with a heart that pursues truth and not one that defends their own beliefs. There is a lot of info that simply can't be overlooked. And though this may hit you in a shocking way, like the Titanic documentary did for me, we pray that you overcome the shock and dig into the facts, that which is found only in the scriptures and the scriptures alone. Please visit us at testeverything.net for more teachings on this topic. We pray you have enjoyed this teaching. Remember, continue to test everything. Shalom.